So, in what ways does your media product use, develop, or challenge forms and conventions of real media products? Okay, so the whole inspiration for our opening came from Hot Fuzz and Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch inspired Soul of the Story, while Hot Fuzz inspired the action comedy genre, and the whole idea of guns and action in a place where you wouldn't usually find it. The brilliant Edgar Wright directed and co-wrote Hot Fuzz, and also did a little editing too. In fact, his editing inspired our sound bridge at the end of the dream sequence, which is similar to what he did in Hot Fuzz. He also directed Scott Pilgrim vs The World, which puts the real world into a video game-esque universe, throwing scores and life bars around, which inspired the graphics featured in our dream sequence, which in itself made the dream more dreamlike, according to our lower sixth questionnaire results. How does your media product represent particular social groups? Our film represented normal, full-time, further education teenagers, and all of our questionnaire results agreed with us. I know that our panel of fellow sixth forms have been right twice out of two, but their winning streak is about to screech to a halt. Over half of them said our portrayal of this particular social group was positive because it was funny, but if you think about it, not paying attention in class and daydreaming about slaughtering your classmates in school isn't exactly a positive portrayal, is it? What kind of media institution might distribute your media product and why? From a what films does breaking reality remind you of question in our questionnaire, and from the films that inspired us, you can build up a list of similar films along with their distributors, and with that, I can get a really good idea with what company would distribute Breaking Reality. Firstly, Universal Pictures, an American company that worked on the likes of Hot Fuzz and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. The two films are not only rather different in general, but they have a good 70 to 80 million dollars between them when it comes to budget. Saying that, they always seem to do well in the box office. So because of Universal's open nature when it comes to films, they seem a worthy contender. Next, Warner Brothers. They worked on Sucker Punch, which was the sole inspiration for the story of Breaking Reality. Sucker Punch had a huge budget, along with other Warner Brothers films, such as Sherlock Holmes and the Harry Potter franchise. So Warner Brothers seemed to have a reputation of working on films with more money than cents. Okay, the same amount of cents. Still. What would a low-budget British film like Breaking Reality mean to Big Bad WB? Not much, I would think. Now, on to Optimum Releasing, who distributed Joe Cornish's Attack the Block around the UK. Again, a low-budget British film. But it did well in the reviews and the box office. Optimum don't appear to distribute Hollywood blockbusters, but do seem to have faith in the British film industry. That's a tick in my book for Optimum. Finally, Entertainment Film Distributors. They distributed the Inbetweeners movie. How is this relevant? Teenagers, a school, girls, and comedy. Sounds like breaking reality, but without the guns and pointless violence. And also, a low budget film, at only about three and a half million pounds. Sounds like a reality breaking budget. See what I did there? All in all, my money's on Universal. Not only because of the fact I really like their work, but also because of some of the films they produced inspired Breaking Reality. Who would be the audience for your media product? According to our questionnaires aimed at almost 100 16 to 17 year olds, they said our film is aimed around their age group. So around the teenage years, which again agrees with our opinion of Breaking Reality's target audience. Why? Well, most films mainly featuring teenagers are usually aimed at teenagers. Probably the best example is the Inbetweeners movie, hence the reason why I mentioned it in the possible film distributors list. Another good example I can think of is Attack the Block. How did you attract and address your audience? The fact we decided to write a rather mental film about teenagers attracts a teenage audience almost instantly. Like I said in the previous question, teenage films attract teenage audiences. Comedy and action are two of my favourite film genres, and according to many of my friends that are the same age as me, their preferred genres aren't too different. Our opening sets the scene, which all of our viewers understood, after stating the film was set in a school in the questionnaire. Now, the little twist in the story where Dan goes into his dream threw some people, but it kept them watching. After the viewing, I asked some people whether they understood what was going on. I did get an answer that I really wanted to hear, which was something like, not at first, but when the game ended, I knew exactly what was going on. 
In our questionnaires, we included a question asking whether the viewers would pay to watch Breaking Reality if it was completed and released into cinemas. Most people had a positive opinion, saying yes, because it was funny. Some gave the mediocre maybe, and didn't put a reason, while few said no. The main reason to the no is because they didn't like the film genre, which was expected. I mean, we can't cater for each and every teenager, can we? What have you learnt about the technologies from the process of constructing this product? Well, the main thing I learnt from producing Breaking Reality isn't 100% based on the technology, but it's the fact that films take ages to make. It took us about 3 or 4 months to fully complete a film that's just over 1 minute and 40 seconds long. Back onto the tech, I did learn how to use Final Cut and Live Type, two programs I have never used before. Not only that, but I finally learned how to use a Mac. After being a Windows person from a really young age, I'd always thought using a Mac would be an extremely daunting task. In the end, it was much easier than I expected. In fact, I'm so impressed with the Mac, I'm in the process of saving up for my own. Looking back at your preliminary task, what do you feel you have learned in the progression from it to the full product? I didn't take media studies at GCSE, so this is my debut in the world of media. I seemingly learned every shot known to man this year, so when we storyboarded and directed, I knew what I was talking about and I understood what everyone else was babbling about. On the topic of shots, we integrated match on action into breaking reality, along with the 360 degree rule, of which I managed to fluff up in the first take of our continuity exercise. We used the match on action in the dream sequence when Dan first starts his rampage, and the 360 degree rule applied from just before the dream to the end of the film, even in the sound bridge between the dream and reality. Oh, and if it counts, we sort of used the over the shoulder shot too. Here, here, and sort of here. So that's that. That's a good four months of work evaluated in one easy to handle package. Thank you, and good night. Thank you.